In this video, we are going to look at a few different types of pendula and see whether or not they undergo simple harmonic motion. And here we have a nice simple pendulum going back and forth. And the question is, is this simple harmonic motion? It sure looks like it might be. It's similar to a box on a spring going back and forth. Um, but we'll do some analysis to find out whether or not it actually is. Before we jump into the calculations, we will take a moment to pay homage to Galileo, who was one of the first to investigate the motion of pendulums with uh, pendula in some degree of rigor. And <clears throat> so the story goes, when he was a young man sitting in this cathedral here in Pisa near the Leaning Tower, he would watch these chandeliers swaying back and forth when he got a bit bored with the sermon and would time them using his pulse and try to figure out what was going on with the motion of a pendulum. So if we analyze the forces acting on a pendulum, we've got a gravitational force going down and a tension force going up the wire. If our angle of displacement up there is theta, this angle here is also theta, so this component of our gravitational force is going to be the weight times cosine theta. This component here, you can think about it there if that's easier, but it's the same over here, is going to be mg sine theta. And this is the force that is actually causing it to accelerate. This one here gets canceled out by the tension. And with the spring force, we saw that it was negative kx. So the restorative force was proportional to the displacement. So in fact, any force that's proportional to the displacement, and if it's uh, tending to push it back to where it started, we call that a restorative force, that will give a simple harmonic motion. So that's the uh, telltale sign that we're looking for. Uh, so moving on from springs, here we've got our restorative force is negative mg sine theta. Now we don't want theta, we want x, the uh, actual physical displacement in meters, but we can relate theta to x. Previously, um, we said that the arc length L is equal to the length of your radius of your circle times the angle, but now we're going to rename things to make it nice and confusing. The arc length we're going to call x, and r was the radius of the circle, which we're going to call l, because we want it to be the length of the string of the pendulum. And so that is equal to theta, so forget about that notation for now. Uh, if we solve this guy for theta, we get x over l, and if we go ahead and substitute that in over here, we've got negative mg sine of x over l. So, are we proportional to x? Well, not quite. So this is not a perfect harmonic oscillator, but it's pretty close, particularly if we do one of the physicist's favorite tricks, and that's called the small angle approximation. So for small angles, sine of theta is pretty close to theta when theta is measured in radians. So we can go ahead and say, well, sine of x over l is pretty close to just x over l. So negative mgx over L. And in that case, the force is approximately proportional, and it's pretty, a pretty good approximation for small amplitude oscillations of a simple pendulum. Now, if we wanted to find our um, frequency relations, we can play the same game that we did with, um, uh, with the box on a spring. So we can say that MA is equal to negative mgx over l, and then we can write, well, we can get rid of the m's, and then we can write the acceleration as the second derivative of the position with respect to time. And then if we go ahead and move this to the other side, I'm going to write it like this, g over l times x equals 0. So this is identical to the equation we got before, except for this part right here. Before we had k over m, and now we've got g over l, and I'm not going to work through all the details again, but you ended up with uh, omega squared was equal to this. So now we've got the period of a pendulum in radians um, is going to be g over l square rooted. 
So there we've got the period of a simple pendulum. We can also write expressions for its displacement as a function of time. So we can have theta is equal to its maximum angular displacement times cosine omega t plus phi using all the same ideas that we used previously where phi, our phase angle, is just telling us um, about the initial condition. So if you pull this pendulum back and let it go uh, from rest, then phi would be zero in that case. Uh, if you gave it a kick when it was sitting there at equilibrium, then you could use a sine function instead. And all of those similar ideas. Uh, we can also apply uh, frequency, regular frequencies, omega over 2 pi. So once again, we'll get expression like this for the frequency of a pendulum. Period is the inverse of that. So 2 pi L over G. And that's most of the problems that we're going to solve are going to deal with these equations here. I'm going to show you a couple of other types of pendula uh, that won't be on the homework or the test, but it does come up fairly frequently on the, uh, on the AP test. So one is this one here. This is called a physical pendulum. Uh, they're all physical, so I don't know where that name came from. But instead of having a mass on a string, oh, by the way, with the mass on a string, we're assuming the string doesn't stretch at all, and we're assuming that the string is massless, or at least of negligible mass. Here we're going to have some mass distributed throughout, so you're going to have a center of gravity not at the end. And in this case, you'll want to use torques to analyze the situation. I'm not going to go over it in too much detail, but you'll end up with this as your restorative torque and then you can do uh, that's an ugly summation symbol you can do sum of the torques equals i alpha you end up with a differential equation that looks like this plus mgh over i sine theta uh, and that is going to equal zero and you'll end up with, uh, oh, you do a small angle approximation and get rid of the sign because that would make things more complicated. And you end up with a period. So this is kind of the take home message if you want to jot this down for future AP test practice or something. That is the period of a physical pendulum where I is our good friend, the moment of inertia. And we also have this guy here, which is known as a torsion pendulum. Portion. And what this does is, if you have a wire here, this disc can rotate, and as it rotates, you'll get more torsion in the wire that will stop it from rotating, and then it will start unwinding the wire. So this thing can oscillate back and forth, uh, spinning one way and then spinning the other way. Uh, in that case, you're going to start out with a torque that is restorative. Uh, proportional to k times theta, where theta is how much you've rotated. k here is kind of like a str spring constant, but it's called the wire stiffness constant. Anyway, you can do some similar analysis and you get uh, angular frequency of k over the moment of inertia of this disk here. In this case, the moment of inertia was of the, the rod, or in this picture, a baseball bat that is oscillating. Okay, one other piece of information. We can relate circular motion to simple harmonic motion. And one way to think about this is if you're looking at something rotating in a circle edge on, and if you kind of ignore the extra depth to it, so you're just kind of watching its motion back and forth. So maybe uh, imagine like a birthday cake with a single candle right on the edge here. And then from this point of view, you're just watching that candle and you're kind of ignoring the fact that the candle is going toward you and away from you and just looking at its motion left and right. And that left and right motion will be simple harmonic, which you can kind of analyze from taking the horizontal component of its tangential velocity. They call it Vm here for some reason. I'm not sure why. I'm not going to go through all the work. But you end up with this, which was the same equation we had for a simple harmonic oscillator. And to see this idea a little better, let me jump over to another uh, demo. So what I've got here is 
<clears throat> I've got basically parametric equations, right? I've got uh, something going in a circle is oscillating horizontally as a simple harmonic oscillator, and it's also oscillating vertically as a simple harmonic oscillator. Because in that previous picture, we just looked at the horizontal motion um, rather than, well, they're both horizontal, I guess, in that previous picture. But we looked at the horizontal motion from one side. If we went to the other side of the table, it would do the same thing that way. And these two motions are out of phase, so I'm going to go ahead and hit T, uh, have T oscillate here. So horizontally, this red line here, you've got a simple harmonic oscillator. And then vertically, you also have a simple harmonic oscillator. And if you look at the intersection of those two oscillations, it's going to trace out a circle. Now, in order for that to happen, these guys need to be out of phase. Uh, so that when one is at a maximum, when the vertical line here is at a maximum, then the horizontal line, I guess it's oscillating vertically, but it's a horizontal line. Anyway, when the uh, purplish line is at a maximum, the reddish line is at a minimum, and vice versa. So they're completely out of phase. If they were in phase, let's go ahead and adjust this. So if we make this phase angle zero, uh, then they will both be, uh, go away, they will both be at a maximum at the same time and a minimum at the same time. And essentially, you'll just have it oscillate uh, at a different angle, but in a straight line. And you can get a variety of other things. You know, if we've got uh, rather than 90 degrees out of phase, uh, let's do uh, 45 degrees out of phase. You can get some other funky shapes going on here. And if we change the frequency, so right now they essentially both have a frequency of 1. If we change the frequency, then you can get all kinds of crazy shapes. If you've ever studied uh, parametrics, you've probably looked at some of those types of shapes. But if we're thinking about a simple pendulum going back and forth, uh, they will always have the same frequencies because uh, it's not going to have a different oscillation in one direction than another direction. But anyway, that's all I've got to show you, and we'll see you next semester.